say something, you say no. Yes, welcome back. Just in case you just joining us, you're watching News Up, Monday morning edition of News Up. Yes, let's dive quickly to our conversation. Our, our conversation this minute will be uh, on the recent visit of our president, Mamadou Buhari, to Tokyo, Japan, for the Tokyo International Conference on African Development, called the TCAD uh, 2019. Now, these the visits had come with quite a few uh, um, criticisms by a few quarters and uh, we believe that it comes with also comes with some political and economic implications so that is what we'll be focusing on now reports from the house from the state house has it that um, the president yes did have a few uh, dialogue with a few uh, business uh, partners in, in 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 japan he talked about a meeting with tokyo who and um, with um, toyota rather who had showed interest in um, certain uh, uh investment in in nigeria uh, but let me not let the cut out of the uh, we will be joined, uh, we're being joined rather uh, on, this, on this discussion. Uh, we have in our Buddha studio our state house correspondent, um, Kende Amodu. Kende Amodu, good morning and thank you for staying with us on the show this morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, uh, we also have uh, via Skype, we have uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, who is in the UK, he's an economist. Mukhtar, good morning and welcome to uh, News Up. Morning. It's good to yes. see your face. So so good to see you. So good to see you. Okay, so let's let's start this conversation. Would like to start with our Buja. Yes, uh, where Kendra Mudu is um, standing or rather sitting by. Uh, but before then, let's take this report um, also from Kendra Mudu. It gives us a holistic view at what exactly transpired in Tokyo, uh, the president's and visit. Take a listen. President Buhari was in Japan this week to attend the 7th Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TICAD, where he joined other world leaders to deliberate on the development of Africa. It is no surprise, therefore, that the attention of the presidency was riveted on this summit in the Far East Asian country. Apart from the main deliberations by world leaders and government representatives, there were a number of side events slated for countries to engage in bilateral talks with the host nation among, and among themselves. Presenting the country's statement at the summit, President, President Buhari would prospective investors to invest in some sectors in Nigeria. These include power and renewable energy, petrochemical and gas, maritime, shipping and ports, automobiles, mining, agribusiness, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, ICT and the railways. He assured them of good returns as a result of ongoing reform measures taken by his administration. I have also established a presidential committee on enabling business environment, which is made up of key ministries and prominent businessmen to promote the ease of doing business and make Nigeria more attractive and competitive for investment. On the sidelines of a conference, President Bari met with several world leaders. At a bilateral meeting between the Nigerian delegation and the Japanese officials, led by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, President Buhari sought the support of the Asian government in combating piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, as well as illegal fishing in that region. The Prime Minister of Japan pledged a $300,000 support for Nigeria's Defence College, as well as 12 million yen for the country's public health sector. He also pledged his country's support for Nigeria's presidency of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Meanwhile, Nigeria and the European Union have signed a 50 million euro memorandum of understanding to support humanitarian and development efforts in the country's northeast region. The cooperation agreement, which was signed by Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister, Jeffrey Oyema and the EU Commissioner for International Cooperation and Development, Neven Mimika, will bring the total U.S. support to the country to 562 million euros for between 2014 and 2020. To cap off his visit, President Buhari met with Nigerians living in Japan. 
stressing that few Nigerians abroad indulging in criminal activities do not represent the values of the majority of the people of the country. He therefore urged them not to only develop their host country, but also assist Nigeria in acquiring cutting-edge technology and efficiency to improve its capacity for development. I appeal to you to encourage legitimate Japanese entrepreneurs to come and invest in Nigeria. We are continually working to create the necessary and enabling environment for investors to thrive through improvements in our ease of doing business practices, providing security, diversification of the economy, infrastructure, and fighting corruption. Back home, the next agenda for the Cabinet and the National Assembly is getting the 2020 budget on stream. Government's objective to switch to a January-December budget calendar may work if certain targets are met. The budget comes in uh, end of September. Uh, end of September or first week of October at latest. If we have it, the Senate President has actually you know, uh, galvanized us and prepared our mind that we must conclude on the budget before 25th of December. With President Buhari back in the country, next week promises to be busy as the cabinet settles down to work. All right, um, interesting. That was Kenya Amadou, um report over. The, the visit of our president to Japan. Yes, Kendi, let's quickly um, uh, speak to you on this matter. Um, I've listened to, to, to your report. I listened to your report and I saw the figures that you reeled out. Um, for, for me, it, it, could, it could sound impressive, uh, but for some others, uh, they don't seem impressed that um, this is all the presidency uh, the president can get from the TCAD um, summit. Would you rather say that we got quite enough buy-ins into uh, 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 the president's uh, proposal at TCAD? Well, the, to answer that question, you, you have to understand the nature of some of these summits. Um, uh, what you get, where you get coming back are uh, divided into two. One are the immediate gains. Then there are the gains that come afterwards. There are also the gains that come on the sidelines of the summit um, as a result of bilateral relations between countries, uh, between governments, between government and uh, prospective and investors. So, you know, you have to understand that to start with. Um, yes, uh, if you look at it, you say, okay, maybe you got um, expressions, um, promises and pledges from only two clear individuals, Prime Minister of uh, Japan, who has decided um, to invest not only in the country's defense system, 300,000 uh, um, dollars, and then um, also to invest in health, about 12 million yen. And then you had um, the European Union send, uh, signing a memorandum of understanding with Nigeria so as to intervene in the humanitarian crisis uh, in the Northeast. And that's 50 million uh, euros, which is quite a lot of money. Uh, but aside of that, that is the immediate um, gains that came out of that uh, summit. There are also the meetings on the sidelines. For instance, you had uh, the president uh, meeting with representatives of an arm of the Toyota company who are interested in um, um, a wide range of um, um, activities in Nigeria and then he is saying add that to add to that put a, a, a car plant in Nigeria so yes um, there are the immediate gains there are the gains you won't see immediately there are those you won't even see uh, going forward we'll come back to you very shortly let's speak with our guests uh, via Sky Mokta Mohammed. Now, Mokta, the president unveiled an initiative with the Japan 
uh, Japanese um, government. That's the Japan-Nigeria Business Facilitation Council, uh, which he said will be a platform for trade cooperation uh, between both countries. Now the question is: We know how much um, we know the relationship with China, Nigeria, and China relationships. Uh, do you think that um, this, in any way, is going to hamper uh, what we currently uh, enjoy, so to speak, uh, with the Ni Nigeria-China relations, as compared to what the president signed with the Japanese government? Good morning. I don't think so. Um, when you look at the, what the president signed with the Japanese government, is different from what the president had with the Chinese people. So. Um, we are looking at different bilateral agreements. With the Japanese, we are looking at their strong point. And with the Chinese, we are looking at their strong point. With the Japanese, you could say that we are looking at the strong point of having um, their car industry coming to Nigeria. Then with the, with, with the, um, with the Chinese, we are talking about um, having uh, them coming to help us in the area of construction and infrastructural development. So I don't think anyone is con con conflicting with any of them. I, I just have a different opinion that we don't have to travel all the way to Japan to sign an agreement with Tokyo. Um, we saw the Toyota coming, coming all the way to Ghana to sign an agreement with the Ghanaian people, not for the Ghanaian president going to Tokyo to go and sign an agreement with Toyota. So it depends on which way we are looking at it. We should always know that Nigeria is the biggest market in Africa, and we should take our pride in place, even if we have some infrastructural challenges. Uh, thank you for that intervention. But, but quickly, uh, you have listened to uh, our report uh, from our State House correspondent. He's reeled out all uh, the proposals and all the memorandum of, of understanding that the president has signed uh, in, in, in Tokyo and at Tika. Now, tell me, are you very comfortable uh, that um, it, it was um, a good outing for the president? <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't expect us to say the but for the presidency or I mean tell us that the outing was not good and for your reporter that was there you could see all the agreement. It's it's a different thing to sign an agreement. It's another different thing to begin to see the reality of this agreement come to play. We have seen us sign so many bilateral agreements, but up to date we have not seen this agreement play a very important role in our economic development. The only agreement that we have signed that we saw it take place and plays on little important role in our economic development is the agreement we have with the Chinese in terms of infrastructure. And some people still have their doubts about that agreement. So for me, I don't think so. But I, I will wait and see and see whether this one will be different from every other agreement we've signed. Remember, this is not the first time we are going to sign bilateral agreement with, with developed nations. I, um, at the time this Chinese, um, this Japanese meeting was going with the president, the G7 were at a meeting and they invited some African leaders there. And unfortunately, the largest market in Africa, the, 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 the most populous black nation was not invited. We should be looking at that, not looking at the president going to sign just and sign with one country when he would have had an opportunity to sign with about seven countries and tell them about the war we have in terms of security and others. But let's, let's wait and see that, hope that this time around, they get it right. Um, Mokta, let's speak again to Kende Amodu in Abuja studio. Now, Kende, from the report you gave us earlier, uh, you mentioned some figures which um, uh, you said the Japanese government was interested in, in helping Nigeria with. We talked about helping uh, the, uh, let's say, war-torn areas in Nigeria. You talked about um, health. Uh, them trying to improve the health system. But some would argue that uh, most of these things that we heard from the Japanese government are consumables. Nothing concrete is coming to Nigeria as compared to Ghana, who signed an MOU to actually have uh, an automobile company in their country. Now, Nigeria always prides itself as the giant of Africa, but we see Ghana take this one uh, from us. So would you rather say that, or would you say that most of the agreements we came back with from Ghana are more of consumables, helping uh, those in the northeastern part of Nigeria, uh, health, uh, education. Would you say they're more consumables than concrete things that Nigerians can actually benefit from? I wouldn't say so. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a narrow way of looking at things. Um, don't forget that in 2016, there was a TCAD that was hosted by Kenya. I was hosted on African grounds. And uh, it, 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 you might not be surprised that it was at that uh, conference that talks to bring a motor assembly plant to Ghana began. So uh, the, the president already had talks with uh, uh, the Toyota 
and uh, had already talked about Toyota also uh, bringing a car plant to Nigeria. So uh, they are, like I said, they are immediate gains. Then there are gains that you're, you're, you're going to see later on come to pass. It's not, uh, the, the saying that there's a good outing does not mean that you have immediate results. There are results that are, are in the bag, that are in development, and they will eventually manifest. So yeah, um, um, Japan uh, agreed uh, to support our health system, uh, agreed to invest in our defense college. Those are things that are assigned between the government of Japan and the government of Nigeria. Don't forget that on the sides, on the sidelines of all this, were also meetings between the government of Nigeria and business concerns in Japan and investors, which it would in Japan. And those discussions obviously may yield fruits, may not yield fruits, but at least the discussions have begun. Oh, okay, Kainde, um, let's look at this from this perspective. Uh, would you rather that um, our president was invited at um, uh, the G7 as against the TCAD at this point in time? Well, well yeah, the, the G7 is a huge platform, uh, but uh, when critics talk about Nigeria not being invited to the G7 this time around, they assume or they try to create the impression that uh, Nigeria has never been invited to the G7 forum, and um, that is a, a rather a fallacy, you understand. If Nigeria was not in uh, invited to the G7 forum, it can't force itself into that forum. But the important thing is that it was recognized and invited to the uh, TCAD forum. And from the TCAD forum, he hopes to get some gains. So um, criticizing Nigeria for not being part of the G7 forum um, is rather um, short-sighted because it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that next year Nigeria might not be invited to the G7 forum. The G7 forum sets its own agenda and it, it has its reasons why it did not invite Nigeria. Uh, let's, let's head again to uh, Mokhtar Mohamed and hear uh, some of his views on this uh, particular matter. Uh, because some Nigerians have said that this trip was just a money-begging trip that the president went for. Uh, now, this um, Tokyo International Conference started in 1993, and Nigerians are wondering what has been the gains, what has it been the benefit since 1993 till now? Because uh, uh, some of them feel that um, uh, Tokyo just wants to milk Nigeria of its, uh, of its milk and honey. Uh, so do you, would you say we've had, over the years, benefits that we can hold on to between Nigeria and Japan? <laughs> There's no benefit. Uh, you, you just need to look at what have Japanese brought into our economy. Um, the only thing we've heard about Japanese doing to our economy for a recent, for a recent time was um, trying to support the IDP in the, in, the, in, the, in the Northeast, just like what you read pointed out in your report earlier on. Outside of that, I've not seen any community investment from the Japanese uh, uh, um, um, government in Nigeria. And even if you look at it, after during that conference, you hear the Japanese government even saying that they are signing it, an agreement with African Development Bank trying to invest in Nigeria. So they are not, sometimes they are not looking directly to invest into our company. They are trying to look for other channels to come into. And like uh, you, your colleague already pointed out in that report earlier on, we, we, we're more not looking at technical agreement. We are not looking at any um, agreement that is coming to develop our skills, any agreement that is coming to enhance the entrepreneurial skill of Nigeria. You could hear the, found, the founder and the, pres, uh, the founder and chairman of UBA telling Japanese government that they should come and try to develop the entrepreneurial spirit in, the Niger in, in, in Nigeria and Africa. So that tells you that there's, there has been little or no contribution for the Japanese uh, government to Africa as a whole and to to Nigeria as, as a country. So for me, I, I, I personally think that it was not something we should be rushing into. It was something that the vice president or even the minister for trade and investment should have been there, not taking the whole peripheral of government. And because of that, we didn't have the Federal Executive Council seat for the first time after inauguration. I think we should begin to, to, to pride ourselves, to have our pride in place as a, a continent, as, as a continent, but as a country, especially Nigeria, being the mouthpiece of Africa. I don't think we are doing that at the moment. 
Uh, all right. Um, um, let's talk to um, Kende again in Abuja. Kende. Yes, Kende, quickly. Uh, what is China's role in all of this, um, the TCAT uh, 2019? We didn't hear much mention about China in all of this. Are they somewhere in the picture? No, well, this is strictly between Japan and the African continent. China also has its forum, just as the EU has its forum, just as uh, the Asian countries also have their forum with the AU. Don't forget TCAD uh, uh, is jointly organized by the Japanese government, United Nations uh, Development Program, the UN, and the African Union Commission. So it's, it's, it's not as if it's only Japan that does the organization. Um, uh, Mukhtar said something earlier on about um, um, Nigeria sending Lua uh, delegates rather than its president. But uh, if we're talking about t Nigeria taking its pride of place, other African countries were there. We seem to forget that other African countries were there. There were 21 African leaders in that summit, uh, and each went to negotiate for its own share, uh, share or, of um, cooperation with Japan um, uh, there. Um, I agree with him that there's not been uh, much, of, uh, uh, much signs of Japan investing in Nigeria since TICAD began in 1993. But um, in the last uh, that was TICAD 6. Um, Japan actually um, invested about uh, 50 billion U US dollars in, in the African continent uh, and also uh, an, an additional 10 uh, million dollars in infrastructure. So these are things that come down uh, to the African continent. We may say that we have not seen uh, signs of it uh, developing, but these are agreements that are signed. It's not only Nigeria that goes to conferences such as these uh, to seek uh, cooperation and aid. And since Japan has said that it's interested in investing in Africa, I don't see why Nigeria shouldn't be a part of that. So, well, the Japanese, this is a Japanese thing. The, chi the Chinese, uh, the government of China also has its own forum in which it engages African leaders the African Union, uh, and I think one of it will, it will come up very soon uh, in, in Addis Ababa. This China question, there were some reports that China uh, allegedly tried to stop uh, some African leaders from attending this um, TCAD, uh, this conference in Japan. And that was why I, I asked the guest in Abuja, uh, no, the guest via Skype rather earlier, if this was going to cause a problem between Nigeria and China, knowing that we've come a long way with China in terms of um, doing business. So the speculations, could they be true that um, China allegedly tried to stop some African leaders from attending this TCAT? Well, I'm not, um, I'm not too sure about that information, but you should understand that uh, both Japan, China, the EU, the US, are all competing for markets in Africa. Africa is seen as the market where they uh, will take their goods. So yes, Japan is offering maybe development, is uh, offering funds for development in Africa. It's also looking for a market f to, t to uh, take its products. Uh, it would be the same thing in the UK too. So uh, these are competing markets. So it wouldn't be surprising if Japan and China were competing for the, the, the markets in Africa and China were to say, um, African countries, please don't go uh, to this conference. But every nation in Africa is a sovereign state and not under, uh, we're not being colonized by China. So each leader, each African leader has the, uh, has the mind or has the independence to take his own decision whether to be a part of that conference or not to be a part of that conference. Okay, would you rather say that um, maybe Japan has identified uh, um, gaps in the China-African engagement and is offering new opportunities? 
Well, every country, uh, every country is looking uh, to uh, fill in the gaps. China saw a gap in the African country and moved in massively. Uh, don't forget that before China moved in massively uh, into the African continent, Ni Nigeria and other African countries had partnerships with many countries across uh, uh, the world. UK, for instance, was a traditional uh, trading partner with Nigeria. Uh, and Nigeria is probably one of its largest tra trading partners uh, on, the, uh, on the continent. So, um, yes, um, Japan would have identified some of the gaps, some of where China is not filling in, and would want to fill in. It's all the mat is, is uh, what you call another rush uh, for Africa each trying to gain advantage or gain a foothold in the African market. Again from Mokhtar Mohammed. Uh, Mokhtar, Africa seems to be the hot kick now or the bride of um, the world as um, these Asian countries are trying to pitch their tent in Africa. But we know that Nigeria has a lot of challenges. Security is one of them. Infrastructural deficit is another. Uh, we have a lot of you know, deficits in terms of our development rate. Uh, do, would you say the president did well in, um, uh, in actually selling uh, Nigeria to these Asian, to, the, uh, to Jap the Japan government, Japanese government, in terms of bringing their businesses to Nigeria? Yes, in terms of that, I think for the first time I should um, uh, say the president did well in trying to um, the image of Nigeria because his traveling wasn't long after the FBI list was released. And the president made the whole world to understand that not all Nigerians are criminals. Nigerians are hardworking people. You just few disgruntled Nigerians that are involved in all this and uh, issue. I think that was the yeah, you know, that was the first time we've seen the president travel abroad and talk so many good things about us. The last time he went there, he made tried to portray us as a nation that is full of corrupt people. But I think for the self image of Nigeria has done well. But to see whether he was able to um, market Nigeria to the Japanese government, I think um, like um, you rightly pointed out, or your colleague pointed out earlier on, it's more or less like we're going to beg Japanese to come and give us money, that we need money. Uh, I, I, I think what the gov the, I, we are in the fourth industrial revolution, in the fourth industrial revolution, it involves um, um, in, um, individuals, companies doing business with individual companies, not um, government going by there trying to see what they can do with other governments. So I think the president should have just been able to enact policies it's an administration of the policy whereby Nigerian businessmen could cooperate with the Japanese businessmen to bring back the business to Nigeria. The biggest Japanese brand is in their car area. When we talk about the car, the automobile industry, um, Nigeria is the highest, highest, highest um, uh, importer of um, Toyota product in Africa. The records are there, even virtually in the world, and most of our official companies are using Toyota cars. We are not leveraging on this. All we have to do, we don't even have any assembled plan of Toyota here in Nigeria. All we have is distributing license. I think that is a strong point the president should be talking. And when the president was going to this meeting, did he go with the chairman of Toyota or did he go with the distributor of Toyota Nigeria? Did he go with them there to say, okay, what are the challenges? What do you want the Japanese government to help us do? And they would be in a better place to tell the president what we really think we have with the Japanese government, not the president itself going there and trying to think of what we want from the Japanese government. Yes, the IDP issue is there, the security issue is there. We've not had any equipment from the, from the Japanese government since the war on terror started. Although they said they have been contributing through aid for the IDP camp, which is neither here nor there. So for me, I, I, I think uh, we went like we went begging them. And let's see whether at this time uh, begging will, will, will give us any good results. Oh, thank you so very much for that intervention. Thank you for talking to us whenever we call on you. That's Mukhtar Mohammed. He's an economist. Thank you so very much. Let's quickly um, talk with um, Kende Amudi in Abuja. Kende, the, the concerns are uh, that um, we don't seem to have uh, positioned ourselves very well uh, to be able to, to benefit from all of these um, summits and conferences uh, like Mukhtar just talked about. Uh, we, we, we seem not to have put uh, 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 structures and policies in place that would attract um, uh, these uh, uh, foreign investors. I would rather think uh, we are putting the cart before the horse. I mean, Ghana got um, the automobile um, 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 deal from TCAD, and what have we gotten so far?
first and foremost to say that Nigeria has not has not positioned itself well to um, reap the benefits of a conference such as TICAD. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say it's completely correct. Uh, even at this meeting, officials of the Japanese of the Japan Bank for International Cooperation, led by its deputy governor, uh, indicated interest in supporting um, projects involving Japanese companies in Nigeria. And uh, they, it indicated that a handsome amount of funds have been set aside uh, for the initiative. So it's not as if Nigeria has not uh, positioned itself via policies. Um, don't forget that even at the, it's op uh, given the o Nigeria's opening statement at the conference, uh, President Buhari had said that uh, Nigeria that had promised uh, uh, Japanese investors that they would get uh, uh, good returns for their investments in Nigeria, and that uh, there was even a committee uh, for um, improving business in Nigeria, uh, ease of doing business in Nigeria that was already in place to ensure uh, that they got uh, good deals coming in and that their interests were protected. Uh, so um, we tend to harp so much on that car deal or that car plant coming to Ghana and we're forgetting that that car deal coming to Ghana was only signed recently, which means that we could also say that Ghana has been going to all these sorts of uh, international conferences down the years and uh, hasn't gotten anything until now. So maybe next year. A Japanese company will come and sign a, a car plant uh, in Nigeria. And then you say Nigeria has gotten something out of uh, all its going for conferences all this while. Uh, let me point out, you know, that uh, many of the discussions that go on between government of Nigeria, between prospective investors, don't, aren't actually reported okay. in conferences like this. What we just do as report is um, do uh, a, a, a summary of everything uh, that went down. The nitty gritty is now left with the ministries of trade and investment, the Sorry. minister okay. of foreign affairs, right, and okay. uh, businessmen from both ends uh, to, t to tie the knots and sign the agreements. So to say that Nigeria has not uh, benefited completely uh, from this conference is is not looking at the big picture just All looking right, at Andy. it narrowly because what we came to report is that uh, uh, there are just one or two agreements that were signed All right, but there is well, let's a end larger there. picture that should be looked at all right, Kende Amodu, thank you so much for your time. Kende Amodu is a senior correspondent, Silver Television, Abuja. Thank you for your time with us, Kende. Thank you. All right, we'll need to take a break at this point. When we come back, our next conversation will begin. Please stay with us. Get the news fresh and while it's hot. If you want breaking stories in Nigeria and across the world,